welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that our hearts will thirst after God and He'll load us with His blessings in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Thank you for the thirst, the passion, the desire, the longing you have given our hearts. Thank you for all our brethren, brothers and sisters, young and old, in all the places we are gathered together. We are praying, O oh Lord, as you have promised, you bless all your people tonight in Jesus' name. Satisfy the longing of every heart. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're reading from Psalm 42. And I'm reading from verse 1. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Here is a psalmist telling the Lord personally that as the heart, as that animal runs after, longs after, and desires the water because it's very thirsty. He says, so my soul panteth after thee, O God. He wanted something from God, something spiritual, something physical, something for the wisdom and the power and the knowledge to rule the nation. And he says, my heart is panting after you. He says in verse 2, my soul thirsteth for God. He says, although I have the things of the world, the place, the position, and the property and everything, yet there is something that all this world cannot offer. And because of that, my very soul is panting after God, and I'm thirsty for him, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? As you look at Psalm 61, Psalm 61, reading from verses 1 and 2. It says in Psalm 61, verse 1, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. It says it's not just a silent passion. It's not just something quite within me. Some people will say, yes, I thirst after God, but I keep it under check. I keep it under control. I don't want to voice it out. I know what I'm meditating on in my heart. But the man said, it's my cry. It's my calling. It's my passion. And I'm really going out for God. He says, attend unto my prayer. Verse 2, it says, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. Understanding that this is a king, understanding that this is the highest uh, uh, position that he held in the whole nation. And yet he said, apart from all that, my heart is still seeking uh, after God from the ends of the earth. Wherever I find myself, I will cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Here is the reason is passionate about it. Here is the reason is a panting after God. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. If you could say that in your heart, that you know there's still a higher level, a higher experience, something greater than what you have got, and you are telling the Lord, and you are telling the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, you are telling the Lord, and you are crying unto the Lord about it, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He follows that up in Psalm 63. He says in Psalm 63, O God, thou art my God. He said, my punching is not because I'm backsliding. My seeking you is not because I am backsliding. I still have the witness of the Spirit in my heart. I'm a child of God. Thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Are you so busy in your life that you say, I don't have time for quiet time, fellowship with God? We are talking about David here. If you look at the title of the psalm, it's the psalm of David, a king. Many battles to fight. Many things to look into, and yet it says, early will I seek thee. Early in the morning will I seek thee. 
Are they in my life? Will I see thee? Are they in my profession? Will I see thee? Are they in the ministry? Will I see thee? My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. He goes on in verse 2 to see thy power and thy glory. He says, the reason I'm seeking after you and the reason I'm panting, the reason I'm longing, the reason I, I want to see more of you is that I want to see your power. In every area of my life, I want to see your power. In every area of ministry, I want to see your power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, it tells us in verse 3, because thy loving kindness is better than life. My leaves shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. It says, while I live, I don't have any plan going back, sliding back, forgetting you while I'm alive. I'm going to keep on seeking your blessing, and I'll keep on seeking thee. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. It says, I'm seeking this not for the physical. I'm seeking this not for my body. I'm seeking this for my soul. And I know my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. I pray that that will be a testimony in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're looking at the message, Satisfying Thirsty Souls in a Dry Land. Satisfying Thirsty Souls in a Dry Land. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. Are you thirsty? You'll pant, you'll have passion, you're thirsty for God, for experiences in the Lord, for spiritual things in the Lord, and your heart is desiring, and you want to have more of God, there will be panting, there will be longing, there will be desire, there will be prayer, there will be passion. The passion or the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. Point number two, the prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. You're thirsty, and you know it's only from God you can have your thirst satisfied. There will be prayer, there will be praise, and you'll be trusting the Lord. You know that what you are asking for, to satisfy your soul, satisfy your longing, and to satisfy your spiritual desire. You want to go higher in the Lord, further in the Lord, stronger in the Lord, you are trusting the Lord, it will happen. It will happen in Jesus' name. The prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. Point number three, the priority. If you really have the longing, if you really have the passion, if you really have the desire, you will make it a priority in your life. It will come to the front burner. It will come to the first, number one, in the list of your desires. You desire material things, physical things, domestic things. You desire some mental things. You desire some things in the community. But if you're really punching after God, desiring after God, longing after God, there'll be number one, which will be spiritual, the priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. The priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. Number one, the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. We're coming back to Psalm 42. In Psalm 42, we're reading from verse one. And here we see the expression of the panting and the passion of his soul that is thirsty before God. It says in verse 1, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. How do you know the heart is panting after the water brooks? Number one, 
by going in the direction of the water brooks. I will not go up a tree. We'll not go to a desert. We'll not go to a dry place. He has located the water brooks and is going in that direction. How do you know that the heart is panting and longing because it's not walking slowly, it's not going sluggishly, it's actually running, galloping, and going without any distraction. How do you know that a heart is panting you know, after the water brooks? When he gets to the water brooks, he doesn't look here and there and become a kind of uninterested. He stays there and he drinks the water to the full. How do you know a soul that is panting after God is going in the direction where he can find the word of God, the will of God, the way of God, the grace of God, the power of God, the satisfaction in God is going in that direction. How do you know a soul that is panting after God and thirsty after God is running, literally? It's not a, a person that, you know, is sluggish and lukewarm and lethargic. The service should have started. Whatever I meet, I meet. Whatever I miss, I miss. He doesn't have that attitude. He's literally hurrying up to get to the place of the blessing of God so that he loses nothing. And the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. I do recognize a person that is his soul is thirsty and panting after God when he gets to the place when God will bless him. Like the heart gets to the water brooks, he stays there. He's patient there. He's rested there. He's seeking the Lord there. He wants everything there. He's not distracted by anything. His heart is lying. Everything is God. He's there and he's saying, Oh Lord, today I want more of you. Whatever I've got, I want more of that. Whatever I've got, I want more of you. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God. My soul thirsteth for God. And everything that belongs to God, I want to get to him, to heaven, when I die. My soul, my heart, my mind, Panteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Tells us in Psalm 143. Psalm 143. Reading from verse 6. Psalm 143, verse 6. The Psalm of David. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. My soul thirsteth after thee. As you examine your life and you see what your neighbors are running after. They run after money. They run after position in the world. They run after property, landed property. They run after going there and going there. They run after silver and gold. They run after what they think will make their life comfortable. And then many people, as they do that, the higher they go in the world, the faster they go in the world, the lower they go in the things of God. And they reserve, and then they come back, they're retreating, they're getting less. But now it says, I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul is thirsty after thee, as a thirsty land. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me. It says, I long for fellowship, your own fellowship. I long for intimacy, intimacy with the Almighty God. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them 
that go down into the pit cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning for in thee do I trust in thee do I trust cause me to know the way wherein I should walk says that's why I pant after you that's why I thirst after you I do not know the way the way to your destination and the way to my destiny that you have ordained for me only you know that way that destiny and that thing you have planned for me because I don't know that's why I long I desire I pant I pray I want to know the way wherein I should walk for I lift up my soul unto thee I lift up my soul unto thee Isaiah chapter 44 what are we panting after what are we longing after what are we desirous for what are we praying for what are we looking for Isaiah chapter 44 reading from verse 3 Isaiah chapter 44 reading from verse 3 for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty that's the promise of God it says he himself will pour the refreshing water the reviving water, the cleansing water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. It starts by talking about water, the water that refreshes us, the water that renews us, the water that revives us, the water that cleanses us. And I am most son, and he says, I'm talking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit upon us, to be born of God, born of the Spirit, to be sanctified, sanctified by the Spirit, to be baptized and to be filled and to be immersed and to be empowered by the Spirit, to be renewed by the Spirit, to be revived by the Spirit, I will pour my Spirit upon thy seed. The people who thirst and the people who long after God. And it says, I'll pour my blessing upon thy offspring. Verse 4, and they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's. Your testimony will be clear. You'll say, I am of the Lord. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord. And so name himself by the name of Israel. I pray that will be true for you in Jesus' name. Psalm 55, verse 1. 55, verse 1. O oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. In the plural. Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. The water of life. Come ye to the waters. The water of strength. Come ye to the waters. The water of the spirit come ye to the waters the water of the word whereby we are cleansed and sanctified come ye to the waters he that has no money come ye buy and eat ye come buy wine and milk without money and without price he invites us to come he invites us to seek invites us to buy, invites us to pray, invites us to seek his face. And then he tells us in verse 12, for you shall go out with joy 
and be led forth with peace. Well, have peace and peace that passes understanding in Jesus' name. That's why we're panting after him. That's why we're seeking him. That's why we're longing after him. When there's confusion or commotion, when there's sorrow or sadness, and you want him to give you peace that the world cannot give, you want him to give you joy and happiness. You want him to give you satisfaction in life. He says, he shall go out with joy. Amen. And be led forth with peace. Amen. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Chapter 48 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 48. I'm reading from verse 18. Oh, that thou art akin unto my commandments, then at thy peace being as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. That's why we're seeking the Lord, so that our peace will multiply. Your peace will multiply. Peace in your heart. Peace in your soul. Peace at home. Peace in your neighborhood. Peace in your community. Peace in the place of work. Peace in your family in Jesus' name. And your righteousness as the waves of the sea. Righteousness will multiply and be deep and be great and be high in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. And he thirsted not when he led them through the desert. You'll never go through a wilderness without abundant supply in Jesus' name. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He claimed the rock also and the waters gushed out. That experience will come back again. It's in Isaiah chapter 41, reading from verse 17. Isaiah chapter 41, reading from verse 17. In verse 17, when the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. He'll do that tonight. You'll be longing and panting and desiring, and you've not got enough of what you are seeking. Tonight is a night of blessing, a night of outpouring, and a night when the Lord will satisfy everyone in Jesus' name. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and cheetah tree and the macho and the oil tree I will search in the desert the fir tree and, this, and the pine and the box tree together and now in verse 20 that they may see I will see tonight I will have tonight I will receive tonight what my heart is longing for, I will have tonight in Jesus' name. Say that for yourself. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. You must have that tonight. Fulfillment tonight in Jesus' name. A pouring of blessing tonight in Jesus' name. And the Holy One of Israel has created it. We're coming to Matthew chapter 5. 
reading from verse 6. Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 6. In Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Tell me what you'll find there. Tell me, tell me. Are you wondering why maybe you don't have the righteousness you have been hearing about? Have you wondered why you don't have the ideal, the perfect, what you are seeking, what you are looking for, the righteousness? Have you wondered why your righteousness of today is not higher, is not greater, is not purer, is not wider, is not more extensive than the righteousness of yesteryears because there's no thirst. Because you are not thirsty, because you are not hungry. He says, blessed are they all, all of us. Everyone that hungers and thirsts, everyone that pants, everyone that desires, everyone that is not putting righteousness on the shelf, everyone longing, everyone passionate about it, everyone praying about it, everyone that says, I'm not satisfied, it says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Tell me what will follow. Tell me out aloud. For they shall be filled. The righteousness will not be minimal at the lower part of the glass of the cup. The righteousness will not have feel the cup, have feel the heart. The righteousness will, be, will feel your cup, will feel your heart, will be overflowing in Jesus' name. But you know, it takes thirst. It takes desire. After caring about such righteousness, for your heart to punch at it and for your heart to desire it so much more than any other sin. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. We shall be filled. You'll be filled in Jesus' name. Righteousness at home. Righteousness in the heart. Righteousness in the house of God. Righteousness in the place of work. Righteousness that is seen and known. Righteousness overflowing in our lives in Jesus' name. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Any man thirst, let him come. When we're really thirsty, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. If any man is thirsty, let him come unto me. We'll go to the Lord who is able to satisfy that thirst, who is able to fill us with the Holy Ghost, who is able to saturate us with the spiritual gifts, who is able to make the dry land like a stream of water, a pool of water. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. No part of your life will be dry. Your mind will not be dry. Your soul will not be dry. Your spirit will not be dry. Your heart will not be dry. And even your body will not be dry. Blessing in every compartment of your life. Outpouring in every area of your life. Your soul, your spirit will be refreshed. 
your body will recover if you're sick. The blessing of the Lord will flow through every part of your life in Jesus' name. It says, out of his belly shall flow rivers, plural, of living water. But they speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now he's glorified, the Holy Ghost will be given. I said the Holy Ghost will be given. Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. We'll see it in your life. We'll hear about it, your testimony. Outpouring of the Spirit of God upon your life in Jesus' name. You're thirsty? I said you're thirsty? Blessings will come. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give. Here is the promise. I will give. An unfailing promise, I will give. An infallible promise, I will give. An irreversible promise from the Lord, I will give. Tonight it will happen. I said tonight it will happen. You will not go back home dry. You will not go back home weary. You will not go back home tired and worn out. In Jesus' name, I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life. Tell me the last word freely. It is for you tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Revelation 22, verse 17. Uh, and the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst come. It says, if you are thirsty tonight for the blessing of God, for the overflowing blessing of the Lord, it says, tonight come. And whosoever will, you see there, whosoever will, I said, is she there? Whosoever will, are you there? Let him take of the water of life freely. Take of the water of life freely. Number one is the panting and the passion. But then you have to pray and praise the Lord. You need to open your heart, open your vessel, open your mouth wide before you will feel it. That makes us to point number two in Psalm 42. Psalm 42, we're reading from verses 4 and 5. Psalm 42, verses 4 and 5. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. You cannot pour out your soul with the lid on the vessel, with the cover on the vessel. You have to remove the cover. You cannot seal your mouth, close your mouth, and then pour out your soul. You have to open your mouth. I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. You know, many people do not understand the house of God is the house of prayer. The house of God is where we come to pour out our body, pour out our sorrow, 
pour out our thirst, pour out our desires. He say, I pour out my soul. As I've gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God. With my voice, with the voice of joy and praise, and with the multitude, I kept the holy day, not holiday, the holy day. The people that take the holy day as a holy day. They won't come to church. For them, it's holiday. It's for picnic. It's for photographs. It's for the beach. It's for whatever. But it says, because I have a need, and I want to pour out my soul, I want to seek the Lord, I take that day as a holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God as you come to the house of God like you have come today. Your hope will be realized. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. The devil wants me to stop praising him. I shall yet praise him. The problems come so that I can stop praising him. I shall yet praise him. The doubts come so that I will not have the answer to my prayer, but I will have the answer to my prayer. You will have the answer to your prayer. I will yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Look at verse 8. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life, the prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. Psalm 62. We're looking at verse 8. Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times. Trust in him at all times. Trust in him. Tell me. When you are sad, trust in him. When you are sick, trust in him. When you feel dry, trust in him. When you are at a crossroad, trust in him. When it appears things are upside down in the family, trust in him. Everything will come the right side up in Jesus' name. Trust in him at all times. The ye people, pour out your heart. Before him, God is a refuge for us. For me, God is a refuge. He will not fail you. He will not fail me. He will not fail you when you are in trouble. He will answer your prayer. From tonight and every day as you pour out your soul in prayer, as you pour out your soul in praise, while you are praying and praising the Lord, the answers will come down from heaven. He will not deny you. You will not be denied. Psalm 46, verse 1. Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Read that again. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Read that again now. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. No trouble will drown you. You will not stop this journey halfway. The reason God has called you is going to fulfill in Jesus' name. Only pray, only praise the Lord and trust him with your soul and your answer will come in Jesus' name. Verse 2, therefore, will not we fear? Any person afraid there? Therefore, will we not fear? I said, anybody afraid there? Some people, have, they are afraid of this, our country. Are you afraid? Some people are afraid of the powers of the air, principalities and powers. Are you afraid? 
Some people are afraid in the day, afraid in the night. Are you afraid? Some people are afraid of the economy. Are you afraid? Some people, they have jobs and they have everything, you know, but they're still afraid. They're still afraid. It says, therefore, will we not fear? Therefore, shall I not fear? I didn't hear you. Let the heavens hear you. Let even the devil hear you. Therefore, will we not fear as a church? We're not afraid. The future of the church is in the hand of the Almighty God. Our present dominion is in the hand of the Almighty God. Therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, whatever we hear, whatever we see, whatever we feel, whatever people are spreading, all the rumors, we will not fear. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, we shall be glad. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High, God is in the midst of her. Is God there with you? I said, is God there with you? God, the Savior, is he there? The strengthener, is he there? The healer, is he there? The redeemer, is he there? God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. God shall help you. God shall help us. Tell me the rest. Tell me the rest. Say it, say it. Let me hear you. God will not be late on your case. God will not be late as you pray and as you praise the Lord right early in time. The blessing will come upon you in Jesus' name. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 3. Second Chronicles 20 verse 3. And Jehoshaphat feared you've gone beyond that level now. I said you've gone beyond that level now. And Jehoshaphat feared, but you will not fear. And set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And then we come to verse 12. Verse 12, it says, Oh, our God, you see this, pouring out his soul in time of trouble, in time of danger, in time of insecurity, in time of sickness, in time of perplexity, in time of poverty, in time of joblessness, when you pour out your soul, everything will turn around. Amen. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. We are longing after him, our eyes are upon thee. We are panting after him, our eyes are upon thee. Will he answer your prayer? Verse 20, verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. This is the person who was afraid in verse 3. And now in verse 20, believe in the Lord your God. So 
shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Anybody believing the man of God, the word of God that he speaks there today, where are you? You are prospered already. Yeah. You are delivered already. Yeah. That problem is over. Yeah. Verse 21, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. While the Ammonites are still preparing to fight against you, somebody shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. While the Moabites are still on their way and they are bragging, I will finish him. I will finish her. Somebody praise the Lord. While it appears, your body is still telling another story. I am sick, I am weak, I don't know, I'm feeling somebody shout, praise the Lord. He says, praise the Lord for his mercy, endureth for how long? The mercy of the Lord will be upon you forever. From now, from henceforth, till forever, mercy, mercy, and mercy upon your life in Jesus' name. Verse 22, and when they began to sing, and when they began to sing, problem will not take the song out of your mouth. Sickness will not take the song out of your mouth. And all the sorrow and the sadness and the complaints of the world will not take the song out of your mouth in Jesus' name. And to praise the Lord sent and pushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. Tell me. I said, tell me about your enemies. Tell me about your oppressors. Tell me about the people that want to destroy you. Tell me about what you were afraid of yesterday. And they were smitten. I rejoice with you. Congratulations. I say, Congratulations. Your battle is over. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, Every one of your enemies helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, what am I seeing here? And behold, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. None escaped. You will sing again. You will shout again. You will praise the Lord again. Psalm 40, Psalm 40, we're reading from verse 3. Psalm 40, verse 3. And he has put a new song in my mouth. I said, he has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it. I see you singing. Many shall see it. I see you rejoicing. Many shall see it. I see you testifying. And fear and they shall trust in the Lord. Because of what God will do in your life, many will trust in the Lord. What God will do on your child, many will trust in the Lord. What God will do on your daughter-in-law, your son-in-law, many will trust in the Lord because of you. What God will do on your daddy, on your mommy, 
many will rejoice and they trust in the Lord in Jesus' name. They thought everything was over, but we are starting life all over again. Verse 4, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are thus words, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Your miracles innumerable. Outcome of your prayer, innumerable. Exploits in your life, innumerable. You begin to see great manifestation of power from today that you have ever seen in your life. Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. I'm reading from verse 10. Who is among you that fearest the Lord? that obeys the voice of his servant, that, that walketh in darkness, that has